How did Shuri become the Black Panther? And why did Doom go to war with Wakanda and the world? Well, today we're going to explore those stories in this full story video featuring the Black Panther story arcs, Deadliest of the Species, Power, and Doom War. This is Comic Storian, where we take trade paperbacks in single issues and break them down, removing the fluff and giving you the core story in an audio drama. This allows you to go buy the comic at your local comic shop to get the full story and support the industry. Now, let's begin Black Panther. Aurora, in her new role as Queen of Wakanda, has gone out to speak with the children of the schools in the rural part of the country. She steps from her armored car to cheers from the crowd, despite some of the country still not accepting her as one of their own. As she begins her speech, one of the children suddenly turns and points to the sky. Look, it's him, the king returns, he shouts, getting everyone's attention. But one of the guards looks up, shocked to find that the ship is speeding towards the city, its engines on fire. It's going to crash, someone shouts, but Storm leaps into the air. Not while I breathe, she shouts. She begins to call forth the winds. But the ship is moving too fast, and she barely slows it down before it slams into the city, creating a fiery path of destruction. She lands quickly as the emergency personnel begin to comb through the ship, trying to find King T'Challa. Storm moves inside, finding one of the Dora Milaje clinging to life. It was an ambush! We never stood a chance! She gasps as she dies. Storm's eyes widen in shock as she sees the charred body of T'Challa on the floor. Five hours earlier, T'Challa and his guards arrive at Namor's castle. He is led into Namor's entrance chamber where the mutant king explodes from a pool of water. Welcome, friend T'Challa, Namor declares. I appreciate your coming to see me on such short notice. We have much to discuss. He continued, stepping forward and clasping arms with T'Challa. In the present, Ramonda barges into the hospital, demanding to know the condition of her son. Uncle Essian tries to stop her, but the doors open to reveal Storm. It's okay, let her in, she says. Ramonda steps past the man, as if he could stop me, she snaps. She enters the king's chamber, shocked to see her son barely clinging to life on his bed. Who could do this to my son? She gasps. Four hours earlier, the two rulers sit at an ornate table, discussing the state of the world. Norman Osborn, his rise to power is a curious development, even by Western standards, which is why I called you here, Namor says. He explains that Norman has reached out to powerful people around the world, putting together a cabal. You find yourself in interesting company, Namor, T'Challa notes. Namor nods, wishing for T'Challa to join, so that if things begin to go badly, a level head could intervene. T'Challa ponders this request for a moment. I did not join the Illuminati, an alliance of honorable men. Why would I join this cabal? He asks. Namor nods, explaining that it is for the sake of Wakanda. That T'Challa should make a powerful alliance so that Wakanda isn't a lone island in the sea. Wakanda has always been an island, T'Challa tells him. The conversation has ended, and Namor leaves, bidding farewell to his friend. Now, T'Challa has been moved to a healing chamber, but the doctors tell all those who have gathered that they aren't sure if T'Challa will recover. Essian nods, turning to the leaders of Wakanda that are gathered together. It's time to have the conversation no one wants to have, he says. But Ramonda shakes her head. No, it isn't. We don't know anything yet, she says. But Essian shakes his head telling them that rumors will start to fly and that Wakanda needs a Black Panther. We must initiate the protocols, Queen Mother. Please, you know I am correct, he says. And Ramonda nods her head, finally agreeing. The only question is, who, she asks. 
three hours ago. T'Challa and his guards are returning to their ship. But as they step out onto the landing platform, they are greeted by Doctor Doom and a group of his Doombots. Why am I not surprised? I'm going to take a wild guess. You're not here to recruit me, T'Challa notes. Doom stares at him, his arms crossed. Why bother? I knew what your answer would be, he says. Doom raises his hand, energy crackling in his gauntlet. I'd hoped your wife could be here for this, but I guess your concubines will have to do. T'Challa and his guards prepare themselves. The Dora Milaje are more than you can handle, Doom. T'Challa snaps. Is that so? Well, we're about to find out, Doom tells him. Now, the gathering of leaders turn to storm. With Essian informing her that the protocols dictate that the leadership of Wakanda falls to the queen if the king is incapacitated. A new Black Panther must be chosen, he says to the queen. Storm takes a moment, taking a breath before she stands. So be it, she says. She turns to Wakabi, asking him to go over the aircraft's computer and fuel consumption to figure out where T'Challa had been. She also asks him to fortify Wakanda's borders so that their enemies don't see this as a time to attack. At once, my queen, Wakabi says as he stands and excuses himself. She turns to Asian, telling him that the king's full condition cannot leave this room and that rumors will have already started. We must maintain order to concentrate our most important task, finding the next Black Panther, she says. Everyone is stunned, believing that Storm herself would take over the mantle. But she shakes her head. She looks around. To find the new Black Panther, we need not leave this room. It is up to the Panther God to make the final choice. But it is my belief that she stands among us. Someone who's been training her whole life for this moment, Storm says as she turns to a stunned Shuri. Ramonda begins to voice her concerns, but Storm orders Shuri to report and begins preparations to meet the Panther God for his judgment. At once, my queen. Thank you, Shuri says with a bow. Three hours ago, the Dora Milaje and T'Challa have entered battle with Doom. One rushes forward, attacking Doom while the others protect the king, ordering the craft's autopilot to open fire on the Doombots. She grabs the king, pulling him back to the ship, telling him that getting him to safety is the most important thing. No, we must stay and fight, he shouts. But she shakes her head. I will not gamble with your life, beloved. Now move or be carried, she shouts as her sister leaps over Doom, slashing him with her blade. The guard continues to fight, kicking Doom and slashing him across the stomach as more of the Doombots arrive. She looks down at the face of Doom, shocked to find that it is a robot. Sister, it is a trap! She shouts. But T'Challa and the other guard have boarded the ship, shocked to find Doom standing before them, gloating. Another decoy? Okoye asks. No, it's him. Black Panther hisses. Doom opens fire on them, his energy blast burning through T'Challa. It's a pity you had to be so short-sighted, he says. But a blast hits the ship, throwing Doom away. Go, sister! Nakia says, holding up her blade and a cannon. Okoye drags T'Challa to the ship, quickly taking off as Doom gets to his feet. Nakia tries to attack, but Doom grabs her by the throat, lifting her into the air. Your death will not be a quick one, he promises her. But Nakia smiles. Go to hell, she whispers, pressing a button on her belt. Behind the craft, the entire landing platform explodes in a fireball. As the smoke clears, Doom looks up into the sky, anger in his eyes. Now, Storm puts a hand to the tank holding T'Challa. Don't leave me alone, she whispers. Ramonda enters the chamber, telling her daughter-in-law that T'Challa needs her now more than ever. 
T'Challa always pulls through. He's the strongest human being that I have ever known. I've never seen him so weak before. Something is happening. This time, I'm afraid, Storm tells her. I would do anything to save him, she says to the Queen Mother. Ramona looks at her for a moment before asking if she truly means that, that she has a plan. It is a dangerous road that I dared not speak of in front of the others, she says, and energy crackles in Storm's eyes. I don't care if I have to go into hell itself. Tell me what you know, she says. Meanwhile, on the far side of Wakanda, dark priests have begun their ritual. The uncaged lion is about to be released. T'Challa awakens, memories of the battle in his mind. He looks around to see Okoye floating in front of him. Don't fear, beloved. I'm here to take you home, she tells him. Meanwhile, Ramonda has taken Storm to see the witch doctor Zawavari, who has offered them the chance to save T'Challa. He tells the pair that T'Challa's spirit is in limbo, the world between life and death. That Storm will have to go there to lead the king's spirit back to the world of the living. The ritual we are about to invoke is extremely dangerous. Are you sure you're up to it? He asks. Storm glares at him. Tell me what I need to do, she says. Zawavari nods, but reminds Storm that there are rules for the world of the dead. Meanwhile, Shuri pulls herself up the mountain. Shocked that the task of finding the herb that will allow her to meet the panther god is so easy. But on the other side of Wakanda, the ritual is finished. A portal opens, and from it steps the totemic vampire known as Morlun. Welcome, Morlun, the priest says as he steps forward. Morlun turns to him. I thirst, he growls. The priest nods and tells him that they have just the feast to quench his thirst. Meanwhile, Zawavari whispers the last of the ritual to Storm. She pauses for a moment before turning away and ordering them to begin. Zawavari smiles and nods. Across Wakanda, Morlun finishes absorbing the life force of the cult. He turns, breaking through the wall of the temple. Your sacrifice is appreciated. Now I hunt bigger game, he says. In limbo, T'Challa is shocked to see Okoye, knowing that she died. Of course, I died for you. You know where you are, don't you? She asks. T'Challa is shocked, surprised that he has died. Okoye floats forward as a light begins to appear. She says that he has served his people well, and she is supposed to lead him to his reward. In the world of the living, Storm has been prepared, with Zawavari reminding her that she must think strongly of T'Challa to find him, or she could become lost in the land of the dead. And what transports me to Limbo? She asks. Zawavari smiles and takes a swig of an elixir. You will fly on a burning wind of holy fire, he tells her, breathing fire onto her. Storm thinks of her beloved and begins to spiral through the lands of Limbo. Meanwhile, Shuri has managed to sneak by a pack of sleeping panthers who guard the herb that she needs. She smiles as she retrieves it. All right then, time to meet the panther god, she whispers. In Limbo, T'Challa begins to let Okoye lead him forward into the light, but he looks into her eyes, seeing the look of death. He pulls away, and Okoye begins to transform. What's wrong? Don't you trust me? The Grim Reaper says with a cackle, holding out his hand. In the kingdom of the Man-Ape, the Great King turns to the fall of T'Challa. And he cheers, knowing that they will now rain destruction down on Wakanda. Sire, we are under attack! One of the advisors shouts as they rush forward. Manape, 
isn't surprised, knowing that the enemies of Wakanda would want to attack the next strongest king. My king, it is not a mob or an invading army. Death is coming, the advisor warns. And so, more Lun came to the kingdom of the Manape, cutting through their forces as if they were nothing. The king stood his ground, but it did not matter, and he too fell. The advisor's eyes widen as he relays all this to Sian and Wakabi. The monster consumed him, he says, telling them that the creature sucked the very life force from the king's body, leaving nothing but ashes. Sian turns to Wakabi and tells him that they must prepare their defenses. In limbo, T'Challa stands before the Grim Reaper, telling him that it is not his time. It is only human to resist my embrace. Though your desire for revenge is strong, you will find no peace in the waking world. Now your life is over. It's time to enjoy your just reward, the Reaper says. But T'Challa still refuses. Perhaps there is another that can change your mind, the Reaper says. Light flashes and King T'Chaka stands before his son. In Wakanda, Sian has searched for the queen and Ramonda, finally tracking them down to the witch doctor's house. He is angry that Ramonda would come to the man, aware that T'Challa does not believe in these ancient magics. I will do whatever it takes, Ramonda informs him. But Sian tells her that the people need to hear from their queen. Enough! You are my brother-in-law, but I am the Queen Mother. You will do as I say. Ramonda finally snaps at him. Sian pauses for a moment and finally nods. You are correct. My apologies, he says. She informs him that until T'Challa and Storm return from Limbo, she is ruling in their stead and orders him to return to the palace. Sian returns to the palace, where Zuri and Shuri are preparing for her to meet the panther god. Shuri, once you ingest the herb, you will commune directly with the panther god. You are ready, but take nothing for granted. Nothing is certain. Even now, Zuri warns her. She nods and bites into the leaf. Her eyes roll back into her head almost immediately, and she drifts away. Now. We wait, Zuri tells Sian as both stand by. In limbo, King T'Chaka tells T'Challa that he is proud of him, reaching for his son to pull him into an embrace. But in the spirit realm, Shuri stands before the massive panther god, and she bows before him, telling him that she has prepared to become the Black Panther. I'm ready. I'm ready to step out from my brother's shadow ready to walk my path, ready to embrace my destiny, she says. The god leans forward, sniffing at her. In limbo, T'Chaka tells his son that he has worked hard, and now it is time for him to rest. But T'Challa still refuses, telling his father that he must return to the living world. But T'Chaka puts an arm around him. No one wins every battle, no one can. You are not to blame for being human, T'Challa. It's time for you to give up the fight, he says, leading him into the light. But T'Challa stops and pushes his father away. You are not my father, he says, knowing that his father would never tell him to give up. The Reaper appears again, darkness once again ruling. If a peaceful path is not enough to persuade you, Back with Shuri, the panther pulls away, telling her that she is not worthy of the Black Panther, that she has not humbled herself before her god, but instead comes here to declare how worthy she is, that she sees the role as a trophy, that jealousy has festered in her heart since her brother was chosen. You are not worthy to be the Black Panther. It is not your burden. It is not your destiny, and it never will be. 
now leave this place and consider what you will do, knowing that you will never follow in your brother's footsteps. The god says as it turns and strides away. In Limbo, the dead have risen. Skeletons attacking T'Challa as the Reaper offers a battle to show T'Challa the futility of his denial. But T'Challa continues to fight, beating his way through the bones. I am impressed. I never expected you to last this long. Truly, your will to live is strong. The Reaper says as the dead continue to rise, spilling over T'Challa. T'Challa, your defeat is not a possibility. It's an actuality. You've already lost. The Reaper says, commanding his legion to bring T'Challa to him. But a gust of wind passes through the army, knocking them aside. Now this is something you don't see every day. The Reaper says as he turns to Storm, who descends from above. Standing outside the walls of Wakanda's capital, Morlun smiles. Inside, Wakabi orders the attack to begin, and missiles fire from the city's defenses, bathing Morlun in fire. But when the smoke clears, the vampire begins to stalk forward, unharmed. Blood of the Panther God, Wakabi whispers. In limbo, Storm floats above the Reaper. Release T'Challa now, she orders. And the Reaper smiles at her. Threats? To me? That's rich. Since your species crawled out of the muck, I faced warriors and champions who thought they had the power to take what is mine. And I feast on their screams, he tells her. T'Challa continues to struggle beneath the skeletons. You face champions. But have you ever faced a goddess? He asks. Storm lashes out, hitting the Reaper with a blast of wind and lightning that destroys its body. She floats down to T'Challa. Hello, husband, she says with a smile. In Wakanda, Shuri awakens. She is ashamed to tell Zuri and Sian that she has failed, that the panther god told her that she wasn't worthy. And yet you live, child. Those who the panther god rejects, Zuri begins. Shuri nods, telling them that she doesn't know why she is still alive. But Sian interrupts them, telling her that they need to do something. All our other weapons have failed, he explains. In limbo, Storm embraces her husband. But the light begins to shine again, and she tells him that it is time for him to go home. You mean it's time for us to go home, he says. But she shakes her head. There's something you need to know, she says sadly. She tells him that in order for him to return to the world of the living, she must stay. A soul needs to be exchanged for T'Challa's. I do not accept this, T'Challa says, turning away from her. But the Reaper's skull laughs at them, pointing out that the Queen already agreed to the terms when she came here. T'Challa angrily steps on the Reaper's skull, smashing it. Be silent! He snaps. But the rest of the skulls begin to speak around them. You can't win, T'Challa! You can't defeat death! They say. In the world of the living, Sian has reached out to Ramonda, telling her that they need Storm to combat the horror that is Morlun. But she sighs, and tells them that Storm will not be coming back. That she is lost to the world of the dead now. Are you insane, Ramonda? Shuri has failed to appease the panther god. T'Challa is broken and beyond help. And you squander the most powerful weapon left in our arsenal? Sian shouts at her. It was her choice to make, Ramonda tells him angrily. But it is Zawavari that steps forward. A mischievous smile on his face. People I love are dying, old man. Wakanda stands on the brink. If you have something constructive to say, then get to it. Shuri snaps at him. The witch doctor smiles, asking her why she thinks the panther god would allow her to live. Haven't you wondered if the life given back to you has some meaning, some purpose? He asks. 
She angrily agrees. Bashuri thinks she understands. She turns to Zuri and Wakabi, asking them to stand guard while she makes preparations to defeat Morlun. We're going to kill him, Shuri tells the warriors. Moments later, the two warriors prepare for the end. You ready, city boy? Zuri asks as the sound of battle reaches them. Wakabi nods. I'm ready, country boy, he says. The door bursts open and Morlun steps inside. It's an honor, brother, Zuri says as the warriors rush forward. Wakabi is the first to fall as Morlun puts his fist through the warrior's chest. Zuri raises his weapon to swing, but Morlun twists and grabs him by the face, crushing his skull. I thought this was a warrior nation. Such a disappointment, he hisses. He steps forward to the chamber doors, opening them to reveal T'Challa's tank. He reaches out for the king. I can already taste his heart, his blood, his soul, he whispers. But Morlun stops as a spear pierces through his chest. He looks down in semi-surprise. Monster, you face the muscle of Wakanda, a voice calls. Morlun turns away from T'Challa, regarding his new foe. Now face its claws, Shuri says, now clad as the new Black Panther. Morlun smiles at her. Little girls, I slaughter their armies, tear the hearts from their champions, and now they send little girls against me, he says. He reaches down, pulling the spear from his chest. Little girls with little toys, he smiles. Shuri glares at him. Wakanda has never been conquered, monster. Everyone who tries, dies, she snarls, throwing her other spear. The Morlun moves fast and smashes it from the air. But he suddenly stops, sniffing at the air. Looking at Shuri is surprise. Well, well, well. There's more to you than meets the eye, child, he says as he begins to stalk forward. In limbo, T'Challa still refuses to leave, telling Storm that he will stay there with her. But she shakes her head. My victory was to save the man I love. Please, my husband, live, live for the both of us, she says, pulling him close. Shuri leaps over Morlun's attack, dodging another blow as he punches into the wall. She cartwheels away, trying to stay ahead of him. I'll snap your spine, girl, and while you lie dying, I'll feast on your soul, he snarls. She whirls and kicks him in the face, but Morlun doesn't flinch and knocks her aside. She slams through a wall, but manages to get up quickly. She dodges underneath another blow and heads for outside. You can't kill what you can't catch, she tells him. Morlun chases her as she radios ahead to Ramonda and Zawavari, telling them that she is on her way. Hopping aboard a hover bike, she takes off into the air, firing a net behind her, trapping Morlun and yanking him into the air. But the net isn't holding, and Morlun has already begun to rip his way through. He grabs a hold of the rope, pulling himself up to Shuri. I would have killed you quickly, child. But now I will make you suffer, he promises. He reaches the bike, but Shuri leaps forward and off the front. She leaps clear, letting the bike fall from the sky and crashes into the jungle below. Back in limbo, Storm and T'Challa embrace, but are interrupted by death who appears once more. Time's up, goddess, he says. But T'Challa steps in the way. No, if you want her soul, you'll have to go through me to take it, he says. Death smiles. How noble. Pointless, futile, but noble, he says. An army of the undead begins to rise up as Death explains that while T'Challa is strong, he can't fight forever, that he will eventually tire and fall. 
You will weaken, but my armies never will. The life cycle demands that a soul be given, and that demand cannot be denied, Death tells him. Outside, Shuri clutches at her wounds from falling, but more Lun steps from the fiery crash and begins to move forward. Where were we? He asks. Shuri glares at him. The part where I kill you. She growls. Morlon bats her away, sending her through the wall of Zawavari's shack. He steps in after her, smiling. Well now, looks like I finish off the panther lineage right here, he says. But Zawavari takes a swig of his elixir and steps forward. He breathes holy fire onto Morlon, and the flames consume the vampire. What madness is this? Morlan bellows before disappearing. Everyone looks around in surprise as Shuri tries to get to her feet. Did it work? Ramonda asks. The witch doctor shrugs. I think so, he says. In limbo, T'Challa and Storm continue to fight, but a light flashes and Morlan is kneeling among the dead and death suddenly turns. Hmm, what do we have here? I can hear the screams of 10,000 souls in this meat. He cackles. He looks over his shoulder. You two, shoo, I'll see you later. Death tells T'Challa and Storm. Just like that? T'Challa asks. And Death nods. Just like that. This meat is infinitely more satisfying. Death tells them. In a burst of flames, T'Challa and Storm disappear. They are returned to the world of the living, where T'Challa begins to make a speedy recovery. Everyone gathers around his bedside, with Shuri still wearing her Black Panther armor. I'm overwhelmed with joy that you're alive, Shuri, but I don't understand. Unworthy candidates die, eaten by the Panther God, Ramonda comments. Shuri doesn't understand it either. But it is Zawavari who explains to them that the panther god was testing Shuri. Even though she thought she failed, she still took up the role of Black Panther, even if it was a suicide mission. Not for glory, but for your people. And in doing so, you became the Black Panther, he tells her. Morlun sensed it. That's why he pursued you so ardently. He wanted to feast on the one true Black Panther, he continues. Shuri nods, looking out on the destruction of Wakanda, telling them that she wanted her time to be one of excitement, not one of pain and sorrow. Storm looks at her. A great leader is not defined by the best of times, but on how she guides her people through the worst of times, Storm tells her. Shuri nods as she continues to look out over her country. So be it she says with determination. It has been a month since the attack on Wakanda by Morlun, with T'Challa beginning to heal after almost being killed by Doctor Doom, and Shuri has taken on the role of Black Panther and the task of ruling Wakanda. But she must also search for who attacked T'Challa, while also showing that Wakanda has remained strong. For this, she is headed to America, where she meets with President Obama, after leaving the Oval Office, she is greeted by Everett Ross of the State Department. The President has asked me to serve you as your liaison during your visit here, he says with a smile after introducing himself. Shuri smiles back, telling him that T'Challa has told her about him. He said that you were a government spook, but occasionally useful. I take it you've been assigned to spy on me, she says. Ross waves away the claim. Spy is such an ugly word but not entirely inaccurate, he says. He joins the princess in her car, traveling through the city as he explains that the State Department is more than willing to help her in her investigation, but will not react kindly to any form of vengeance on US soil. But their convoy is hit from above, an explosion ripping apart the street and throwing the cars away. Soldiers armed with jetpacks and arm cannons descend from the sky. Take them all out! No survivors! Their leader shouts, firing off another shot. 
In Wakanda, T'Challa continues to push himself, starting his physical therapy far earlier than the doctors recommended. Sweat drips from his body as he pushes himself, with his trainer asking him to stop. I appreciate your concern. Leave me, the king commands. The trainer passes Aurora, telling her that he tried. The queen watches as her husband pushes himself too far, collapsing to the floor. She steps into the room, trying to convince him. It's too soon, my love. The doctor said it would be months before you could even think about rehab. You're still too weak, she says. But T'Challa shakes his head, remembering Doom's attack, and he struggles back to his feet and continues on. We'll see, he says. In Washington, the soldiers are going through the wreckage, looking for Shuri, but she leaps from the smoke as the Black Panther, slashing through the jetpack of the leader, and she whirls on the others, who are surprised to see her, and their hesitation allows her to leap towards them. She slams one into the ground, slashing through his armor as more soldiers appear. Opening fire on her, one rips through her cape, but she whirls and kicks him in the knee. The captain is back, grabbing her from behind, but she shakes her leg around his ankle, using his weight to throw him to the ground and elbow him in the face. Her guards and Ross join her as Shuri stands victorious. She quickly pulls off her mask and points towards the guards. I want everything before we lose control of the scene. Strip off all the equipment, take tissue samples, the works, she orders. But as her men move to their task, the bodies suddenly burst into flames, burning till there is nothing but ash. Back at the soldiers' base, their handlers nod. Inferno failsafes have been activated. They won't be able to collect DNA, one confirms. Later, at the Wakandan Embassy, Shuri finishes with her phone call from the president, and she turns back to her team. As they begin to go over what data they could gather from the attack, her team informs her that quick scans of the weapons before the destruction show them to be similar to the ones used by the Wakandan Air Guard, and the jetpacks follow the same configuration as Stark Industries. Shuri pauses, staring out the window at the city. Stark? Wakandan Air Guard? The attack on us. The attack on my brother. There must be a connection. Find one, she orders her team. They nod and get to work. In Wakanda, T'Challa has gone to the secret training grounds of the Dora Milaje. They stop their training and raise their weapons as he enters. Beloved, they call, and he smiles at them. Adored ones, we have work to do, he tells them. Days later, Shuri turns to her team, asking Nix and Zakar to finally give her answers. Zakar nods, telling her that he has begun background checks on anyone who would have had access to the Air Guard and might have come to America. Are you starting a witch hunt, Zakar? Shuri asks. He shakes his head. I'm looking for a traitor. Or traitors, he tells the princess. It is Nyx who informs her that a deeper look into the jetpack's configuration lines it with a style used by the Atlanteans, and Shuri's eyes widen in surprise. In Wakanda, Aurora and Ramonda watch as T'Challa continues to train, boxing with the greatest champion in Wakanda. The doctor stands next to them, informing them that without the spirit of the panther inside him, T'Challa could kill himself by trying to force his recovery. At the embassy, Nix informs Shuri that they've tracked the team's origins to the export company known as Hex. She nods, believing that they should look there first. He offers her some new equipment for her Black Panther armor, and Shuri heads off into the night. Arriving at the warehouse, she quickly takes out several of the guards with her new tech, dropping them quietly. The doors are hacked by Nyx, and she makes her way inside. Back in Wakanda, T'Challa stands with the leader of the Dora Milaje, asking her if she is capable of training them to fight robots and magic for an assault on Doom. Yes, she says with a nod, but she looks to her king. But we are flesh and blood, beloved. If you want to oppose magic, then you need to find your answers elsewhere she tells him. 
T'Challa looks at her and nods. Meanwhile, Shuri has slipped inside and quickly taken on the rest of the guards. She looks at the computer attached to the mainframe. I'm plugged into their hard drive. Beginning upload, she tells Nix. There's too much interference for a clean data transfer, Majesty. You're going to have to download it to the portable brain and bring it out yourself, he informs her. She nods and begins to save the data. I don't think so, a voice calls to her. Shuri whirls around to find a woman standing in the room, armed with a metallic whip that sparks with electricity. Princess Regent Shuri, juicy, she says, leaping forward and slashing. I'm Oyaku, baby cakes, and you, well, kitten, you're just dead. Oyaku snaps with a smile. In Wakanda, T'Challa is still training. He hammers the champion with a punch to the stomach, but doesn't react quickly enough to avoid a body blow. Clutching his stomach, he falls to the ground. Majesty, forgive me for a clumsy oaf, the champion says, moving to pick up the king. But T'Challa pushes him away. He tells the man not to apologize, that T'Challa wants nothing but the best from him. I only want to face the greatest warrior in the land. Now, let's try again, like you mean it, T'Challa tells him, preparing to start again. Shuri gets back to her feet, glaring at Oyaku. My turn, she hisses. She leaps to attack, but Oyaku spins and knocks her away. But Shuri is on her feet again, throwing one of her electric bolos. It wraps around Oyaku and electrocutes her. She moves fast, punching the woman in the gut, bringing her a grunt of pain, and then knees her in the jaw. But Oyaku lashes out with her whip and knocks Shuri away. She gets to her feet, pulling off the net. You broke my nose. Bad, bad kitty. I think I'll burn your eyes out for that. She snarls. In Wakanda, T'Challa has gone to see Zavawari, who has offered him a chance to regain his lost power. Smoke fills the room as the witch doctor prepares his potions and alchemy. Let us begin, he says with a smile as he turns his back to the king. Shuri dodges another whip attack, rolling to her feet. She throws desert sand at Oyaku. The device is filled with small nano machines that wreak havoc on the enemy warrior's tech. Cute toy, huh? Shuri says as she launches through the haze, slamming her fist into Oyaku's stomach again. Oyaku falls to her knees before launching needles that stab into Shuri's body. You're tough little kitty, I'll give you that. But you're in the wrong league and I'm done playing with you, Oyaku says as she gets back to her feet. Then let's do this for real, Shuri growls. The two warriors launch into combat as the handlers watch on their cameras. The shadowy figures aren't worried about the outcome of the fight, though. If Shuri does win, the data on the hard drive will simply point her to someone she has no chance against. They hit a button, and an image of Prince Namor appears on the screen. No chance in hell, they gloat. Shuri struggles with Oyaku's whip wrapped around her throat. Sorry, little kitty. You put up a good fight for an amateur, the assassin gloats. But Shuri twists to the floor, kicking and taking out Oyaku's legs and throwing her to the ground. Shut the hell up, she snaps, knocking the assassin through the floor. She gets back to her feet, pulling the whip from her throat. Her radio crackles as Nyx warns her of incoming soldiers, and the soldiers open fire from above, and the warehouse quickly becomes engulfed in flames. I need extraction now, Shuri shouts over her radio. The Wakandan jet barrels into the scene, opening fire on the soldiers and the recovering Oyaku. Shuri fires a grappling hook onto the jet and climbs aboard as they pull away. The soldiers watch the fleeing jet. We're gonna get fired for this, one of them notes. But Oyaku smiles. Relax, boys. This couldn't have gone better, she tells them. In Wakanda, T'Challa has done all the prep for Zavawari's magic. He finally takes a drink of the witch doctor's potion and falls back, his eyes glowing. 
At the embassy, Shuri and her team are going through the data that she recovered from the warehouse. But the data is pointing towards Namor. Knowing that going after the King of Atlantis without proof could be very dangerous. So Shuri orders her team to find concrete evidence. In the spirit world, T'Challa stands before the Panther God. I need to know what I must do to save my country, he shouts to the God. But the Panther begins to take the form of man. That is the wrong question. First, ask what you need to do to save yourself, it says, taking the form of Dr. Doom, who stands over a burning Wakanda. In Washington, Shuri has reached out to Reed Richards, who offers his condolences for the attack on T'Challa. She thanks him, but quickly gets to the point. My pride has uncovered some very disturbing links between the weapons used in the attack on me and an old friend of yours, Prince Namor, she tells him. Reed puts down what he was doing and leans in. Shuri, tell me everything, he asks her. In Wakanda, T'Challa awakens from his visions. Do you live, my lord? Zavawari asks. T'Challa nods as he stands, new strength in his limbs. Oh yes, I live, he says. In Washington, Shuri's team has tracked information back to a traitor to Wakanda, a former member of the Air Guard. She slides down to the window of his apartment, but sensors have given her away. To see Darun running for the door, Without time to be more delicate, she leaps through the window and slashes him across the back, slamming him into the wall. Who are you? He demands as she rolls him over. You know who I am. I'll ask once nicely. A name and two words. The broker, targeting microchip. She hisses at him. But Darun grows angry, proclaiming that she is a pretender to the throne and the mantle of Black Panther. If you were truly worthy to wear the panther mantle, you would have never walked into my trap, he says, revealing the bomb strapped to his body. He hits the detonator and the apartment explodes in a ball of fire. Moments pass and Shuri pulls herself from the rubble, having activated the shield unit on her belt. But a whip lashes out and knocks her to the ground. Oh yes, pretty kitty. Oyaku laughs as she and the jet-packed soldiers approach the stunned Shuri. Hello, kitty. Ready for round two? Oyaku asks, readying her whip. Shuri gets to her feet, glaring at the assassin. As a matter of fact, I am. It's been a real bitch of a day, sister, and I could really use some recreational violence. She growls. She leaps forward, throwing a bomb and slashing at Oyaku's chest. But the assassin flips her over and wraps her whip around Shuri's throat. But Shuri twists, using the whip to slam Oyaku into the jet soldiers. She whirls, taking out two more soldiers. But Oyaku is there again, slamming her into the wall and grabbing her by the throat. Face it, you're not as scary as you think you are. Shuri hisses at her. She ducks down and slams Oyaku's face into the wall. Victorious, Shuri lifts the defeated assassin over her head in triumph. In Wakanda, the news stations continue to blast at the royal family, badmouthing Aurora for going out to try and help the farmers in the rural communities since Shuri is not there. The shadowy handlers watch the news with joy knowing that their plans are finally coming to fruition. Aurora has arrived at the farmer's communities, shocked to see that the crops have been blighted, with the normally fertile earth crumbling to dust in her hands. The scientists can't figure it out either. So Storm leaps into the air, bringing a great rain to try and help the crops grow, to help save Wakanda. This is just a start, Doctor. There are thousands of fields like this. It's going to take weeks, Storm tells them. The doctor nods, but it is a wonderful start, he proclaims, thanking her for her aid. But unknown to them, Dr. Doom is watching from his monitors. Yes, a wonderful start, he says to himself.
Meanwhile, Shuri calls the rest of her team, who were looking into the location of a second traitor, one who also blew themselves up. They tell her that the man insulted the royal family and said the word destery before detonating. Same thing happened here. Insults, a bomb, and that word, destery, Shuri tells them. Ao has heard the term before, after she was expelled from the Dora Milaje when she lost her arm. She became a mercenary for hire, and she heard of a group known as the Destory, who were unhappy with the current direction of Wakanda. They blamed the royal family and wished to return the country to its more traditional roots. Back in Wakanda, the Dora Milaje stand by while T'Challa is being prepped by Zavawari who promises that with his spells, T'Challa has been prepared to withstand magical attacks. T'Challa stands and readies himself as Zavawari's strongest students prepare their attacks. T'Challa nods, looking at them. If you wizards are so powerful, kill me, he demands. And the wizards launch their magics, and the room is filled with blinding energy. Shuri calls back to Wakanda, informing Storm about what she has discovered, and asking if T'Challa has told her anything else about the attack. But Storm shakes her head, informing her sister-in-law that T'Challa has been distant, that he has kept to himself and told her nothing. Neither of them know that Doom and the Broker are watching their conversation through their phones. At the Witch Doctors, T'Challa survived the attack, his body prepared for the coming battle. Have the magics of my strongest students destroyed you? Zavawari asks as he orders his students to stop attacking. But T'Challa stands before them. No, I have never felt more alive. He says in wonder as the smoke clears to reveal his body is unharmed. At the embassy, Shuri steps back into the room, asking for an update from her team. Nyx shows her his laptop, showing that he has managed to piece together a video recording of her brother's aircrafts moments before it was attacked. Shuri watches as her brother speaks to Okoye and Nakia, motioning to the water beneath them, pointing out that Namor moves as fast as the Quinjet. Blood of the Panther God, Shuri whispers, finally having proof that Namor attacked her brother. She calls Reed Richards as she prepares for the coming battle. Her team adorns her with new technology and armor. Since you told me about this earlier, I've been trying to contact a Namor, but he doesn't seem to want to take my calls, Reed tells her. Namor may be cold and ruthless at times, Shuri, but he prizes honor above all. He and T'Challa have been friends and allies for years. Reed says, still unsure that Namor would attack the king. Shuri agrees, promising Reed that she is merely going to speak with the prince. And what if he refuses to answer your questions? Reed asks her. Her team finishes putting the new panther armor on her. I'll insist, Shuri tells him. Doom continues to watch. Perfect, he whispers. The Quinjet nears the target, and Shuri leaps from the craft, falling through the air until she can open her glider wings. In moments, she descends upon the island that Namor sits upon peacefully, reading a book. Shuri activates her cloaking device and slips forward. But Namor looks up from the book he's reading. I can hear a school of fish change direction half an ocean away when the current in the deepest part of the ocean alters by a single degree, I know it. Have a reason to invade my island, or this moment will end badly for you, he says over his shoulder. Shuri drops the cloak and steps forward. This is an unclaimed island, Prince Namor, in international waters. It isn't your kingdom, she informs him. Namor stands from his chair as Shuri demands to know why he attacked her brother, informing him that she has proof. Proof of what? Speak plainly, Namor tells her. I know you betrayed T'Challa. Why, Namor? Tell me, she demands. Namor steps forward, his voice contained barely restrained anger. Careful now, child. Patience is not my strong suit. 
as you've probably heard, he tells her. Namor turns away from her as she demands to know why he attacked T'Challa. That's a foolish and impudent question, child. I've shown you courtesy and patience for T'Challa's sake, but you've used up the last drop. Go home and learn manners, he tells her as he walks away. But Shuri lashes out and kicks him, sending him slamming into the rocks. I didn't come here to play games, Namor, but if you want to play, let's play, she snarls. The two rush at each other, with Shuri punching Namor hard in the jaw. Meanwhile, Doom and the Broker watch with satisfaction. But Namor recovers and backhands Shuri away. Shuri struggles to her feet, breathing heavily. Tell Nix that we may have underestimated Namor. She gasps to her team over the radio. She leaps forward again, slamming Namor into the ground. She rears up to punch him again, but he reaches out and crushes the armor on her forearm. Do you think gadgets and armor will stop me? I faced Iron Man, he growls at her. But Shuri uses her new tech, tiny orbs that glow around Namor. Iron Man is so last century. Welcome to 21st century combat, Wakandan style, she says as Namor struggles away, in obvious pain. These desert suns leach the moisture from your body, she says as Namor doubles over, gasping for breath. But Shuri doesn't end Namor, and instead, he struggles to the side of the island and drops off into the water. Spin up, Tactical. What's my best option? Shuri asks her team as she watches the water churn. Run! They warn her, but Namor breaks from the ocean. He moves too fast. Grabbing Shuri by the throat, he begins to squeeze the life from her. I gave you the chance to leave, girl. For your brother's sake, I offered you that one chance, he says to her as the world goes dark around Shuri. In Wakanda, T'Challa stands before the Dora Milaje who are now armed with new weapons and armor designed to fight against Doom's robot army. T'Challa looks out as his gathered honor guard. We've come a long way, adored ones. We've suffered losses, but we are stronger in the places where we were broken. Our enemies are many and they are terrible, he tells them. He promises them that they will be fiercer, that they will destroy their enemies and the Dora Milaje begin to cheer as training bots surround them. The head mother for the guards steps forward, promising them that if they should perish during this rite of passage, their names will forever be banished from the records of the guard. And now, my sisters, fight or die, she says as the bots step forward. The Dora Milaje let out a battle cry as one of the fights began. Meanwhile, Storm continues to try and aid the farmers, but nothing she does seems to work. The ground continues to suck up the water she provides, but the crops do not grow. No one seems to understand, but Storm believes that this is some sort of dark magic. But locals arrive, angry with Storm and the royal family. They begin to insult Storm and her workers, pelting them with garbage. To heal the land, it must be purified! Drive out the foreign evil! Someone shouts. Anger fills Storm as lightning flashes overhead. One of the farmers looks like they are reaching for a weapon, and Storm hits them with a small blast of lightning. The farmer only had a bag of seeds. The other farmers gather around him, still shouting at Storm. Doom continues to watch from his command center happy with his work. Time now to set everything ablaze, he informs the broker. On the island, Namor stands over Shuri as she collapses to the ground. Stay down, child. Be sensible, he says. But Shuri continues to fight. By the blood of the panther god, Namor, I will kill you, she snarls. Namor moves fast, preparing to hit her again but a blue-clad arm wraps around him, staying his hand. What the hell do you want? Namor snaps, turning to see Mr. Fantastic, Johnny Storm, and Ben Grimm standing there. 
I have this annoying habit of interfering when two friends are trying to kill each other, Reed tells him. Especially when they've been tricked, he says. Namor and Shuri are shocked, but Reed takes them aboard the Quinjet, showing them the data that Nyx recovered was actually tampered with. Namor watches the recording that Shuri saw. That's not the way it happened. I invited T'Challa to visit me on my island. He left in peace and friendship, he tells her. He was framed, Shuri realizes. Reed nods, telling them that only the broker would have the technology to do this. It would seem that he is trying to destabilize Wakanda so that he can acquire Vibranium. Then find him, because I'm going to tear him apart, Shuri growls. At the broker's base, Doom gets on the radio and warns him. The girl and her friends should be putting this together about now. They'll be coming for you, Walter. The broker smiles, his gathering of superpowered mercs standing behind him. No problem, he says. The Quinjet quickly heads towards the broker's base, with everyone questioning if they will be able to stop the man. Shuri nods as she prepares believing that the Broker will assume that she and Namor might have come together, but not all of them. This could be a real throwdown. Do we need backup? Johnny asks, but Shuri shakes her head. As I said, they won't be expecting all of us, she says simply. And if they are? Johnny asks. We can handle it, Shuri promises. In Wakanda, Storm and Ramonda are trying to calm the people, giving a press conference to speak about what happened with the farmers. Roro tries to call T'Challa, asking him to speak, to help his people. I am no longer the king, Aurora, and they are no longer my people. Wakanda and I have become strangers, he tells her. But their conversation is interrupted as guards arrive to take Storm into custody for her assault. What outrage is this? Ramonda begins to shout, but the guards look at her. Your Highness, we have 50 armed men here, and the palace is filled with children. Please come quietly. I'm sure you don't want anyone else hurt, they tell her. Storm looks back to the tablet with her husband's face. My wife. If you fight your way out of there, it will be a bloodbath, and they'll crucify you for it. You need to do the right thing. You need to surrender to them, he tells her. May the panther god protect you, my love, he says before disconnecting. T'Challa looks up as he boards his plane, with his guard informing him that the jammers are hiding their location. Once on board, he puts a call through. It's done. I just threw the woman I love to the wolves. It's all in motion now. Nothing can stop it, he tells the mysterious person on the other line. The Quinjet approaches the broker's base, but they are knocked out of the sky by the mandroid, who smashes the jet with a single blow. Take my hand, I can glide us down, Reed shouts to everyone, but Shuri struggles to the door. Help the others, Dr. Richards. I'm not interested in getting to safety. Shuri says, pulling on her mask and leaping out the door. The broker watches as the heroes exit the Quinjet. Are you seeing this? He asks Doom. Doom nods on the other end of their call. Yes, Declun. Kill as many as you can, but don't risk yourself, he tells him. But as he signs off, Doom asks the broker to hold off the group for one hour. T'Challa offered no resistance at all. He let them take Storm, and my agents say that his private plane left the airport. It's just as I told you. He is broken, the Desturi leader tells Doom. Make no assumptions. Keep him under constant surveillance. It is time to act. The word is given. The hour of the Desturi has come, Doom tells them all. The heroes have reached the ground, with the Thing meeting Creel in a fight while Namor fights against the others. Reed has worked to keep Shuri's team safe while everyone fights. I hope your princess's faith in us wasn't misplaced, he tells Nyx. The techie nods as he readies his weapon. If it is, none of us will ever know, he says. In Wakanda, the Destery have begun to rise up. 
Their leader watches as his soldiers take control of all the key elements of the country with minimal bloodshed. Some of their forces radio secretly into doom. We've taken the central research facility. The vault is ours. My men are trying to break the security system now. There are 12 levels of security, Doom's agents inform him, promising that his men will not take long to break through the vault. Don't waste time. Shoot one of the prisoners in the knee. If that doesn't loosen his tongue, shoot him in the head. Keep doing that until one of them gives you the access codes. Understand? Doom commands. There is a moment before a gunshot is heard and someone screams. Understood, sir, the agent says over the comms. The battle has ended, and Shuri crashes through the window into the broker's command center. Namor grabs the man and throws him across the room. You've attacked my family and my people. I want to know why, Shuri hisses as she steps forward, and the broker smiles at her. Young people today, if you spend less time texting your friends and more time catching up on current events, you know why, he says, pointing to the news channels on the monitors. The news reports of the coup in Wakanda. Shuri whirls back to the broker, but he has touched a button on his watch and begins to fade away. What's the expression? Don't hate the player, hate the game? I'm just the middleman here. You have much bigger fish to fry than me. I'd love to stick around and see how this ends, but I can just turn on the news, he says before disappearing. Meanwhile, Doom has teleported to Wakanda, standing with his agents while the vault is worked on. He stares with anticipation. On board his personal plane, T'Challa is surrounded by the Dora Milaje, and he picks up his phone. We've taken the most terrible risks imaginable. We've put everything we love, all that we hold dear, into the lion's mouth. But now, at last, the cockroaches are in the light. Your plan worked, he says. At the broker's base, Shuri nods at her brother's words. Our plan, big brother. Doom thinks that he is us on the run, but this war is just beginning. He and his allies have played their cards, and T'Challa, now it's time to show them ours. Now we stop running. Now we fight, she says. The coup has ended with T'Challa and Shuri having fled the country. The world watches as former Queen Aurora is put on trial for her actions prior to the coup. With the new leaders of the Desturi citing her as a witch that has brought harm to Wakanda. But Aurora refuses to take a part in a farce of a trial. Kill me if you want, but do it quickly, because I do not believe for a moment that my husband has abandoned me. T'Challa is coming back for me, and he is coming for you. She snaps at them. Let him come, or have you forgotten? Wakanda has never been conquered the council says. Outside, the new soldiers of the Disturi rush out and push the press away, making sure that they can't report on anything, making sure that the Disturi's power is absolute. Meanwhile, Doom is still within the palace vault. His engineers have finally reached a stalemate, unable to open the final lock due to the strange symbols. Doom steps forward and places his hand against the wall using his energy to reveal the symbols to him. These are alchemical symbols from a race of lizard kings that died before mankind descended from the trees. A blood cult brilliant in the dark arts, he says. The engineers are surprised, knowing T'Challa's destiny for the old ways. But Doom knows that the lock can be opened with a simple spell and a blood sacrifice. Energy swirls around him as he casts the spell and kills half the men in the room. Child's play, he says as the lock dings open. He turns to walk away. Now get to work on the next lock, Acacia. T'Challa isn't the only one who disappoints me, he says over his shoulder to his head engineer. 
Meanwhile, on Utopia Nation X, the X-Men are watching the news about Storm. Scott is silent. But Wolverine doesn't buy that anyone could capture Storm and chase T'Challa from his country. The team continues to discuss their options, but they are interrupted when they learn that T'Challa has arrived with his remaining forces. And they head outside to see him. My friends, we need to talk about war, he tells them. They head inside where T'Challa and Shuri fill them in on everything that has happened. Scott, I know how things must look, but believe me when I tell you that there is a good reason I fled. I had to choose between my wife's life and the future of my entire country. And I chose my country, he tells them. He continues to fill them in on everything that happened leading up to the coup, including learning that Doom had turned everyone into a surveillance device using nanomachines. T'Challa had no choice but to push everyone away while he continued his preparations. But what's Doom's motive? Why fund a revolution in your country? What does he want? Emma asks him. T'Challa explains that Doom is after the Vibranium, that he is after all that Wakanda has refined. We've never mastered the secret of using magically charged Vibranium, but I believe Doom has, he says. In Wakanda, Aurora's prison cell opens to reveal Doom, who holds out a hand to her. Your Highness, your assistance is needed, he tells her. Back on Utopia, T'Challa has finished his story, telling the X-Men that Doom is a threat to the world if he gets the Vibranium. And Scott thinks on it for a moment, but he tells T'Challa that Utopia is now a political power that most of the world hates. I can't sanction our involvement, he says. T'Challa pauses for a moment before standing. I understand, he says. Thirty minutes later, his forces are reloading onto their jet. A few months ago, I'd have dropped everything and run off to fight. Scott tells T'Challa, who understands the man's position, but Scott puts a hand on his friend's shoulder. I only said that I can't sanction the X-Men's involvement. However, I can't dissuade them from following their own hearts, he says with a smile as he motions over the king's shoulder. T'Challa smiles as he looks into the plain where the X-Men have gathered with Shuri, and Wolverine holds up a beer. We're on our way to rescue a queen, overthrow an evil wizard, and win back a country. Care to join us? He asks. In the vault, Doom shows Aurora that they have reached the final lock something that requires the finesse of a thief. But he knows that she won't help him willingly, and motions in the Queen Mother, T'Challa's uncle, and the head priest. A guard raises a weapon and shoots the priest in the head. You now have nine minutes and 58 seconds, Doom tells her. She glares at him as she moves to the lock. If it takes the rest of my life, Doom, I'll kill you for this. She snaps at him as she begins to work. Aboard their Quinjets, T'Challa is going over the battle plan for retaking Wakanda, believing that it will be incredibly difficult to do so without bloodshed. But Shuri steps forward, reminding the X-Men that all those who serve with the Disturi are traitors to the country. Gentlemen, I intend to take back my country by any means necessary she says, drawing concerned looks from T'Challa. In Wakanda, the Disturi have been alerted to T'Challa's approach and put their army on full alert. In the vault, Aurora continues to work. 18 seconds. A life hangs in the balance, Doom tells her. But the time is up, and he orders the Queen Mother shot. But T'Challa's uncle steps in the way, taking the round to the chest. He falls to the ground, and she cradles his body. Doom steps forward and grabs Storm. This is not a game, woman. Force my hand, and I will kill everyone in this room. And then I will begin killing your loyal subjects. 10,000 every minute. Now get back to work, he snarls at her. And the lock finally pings that it is opened. T'Challa and his forces have arrived at the border, but are met by the Wakandan army. 
The Disturi leader appears via hologram and warns them against their actions. But Shuri steps forward, broadcasting a message to the armies of the Disturi. The takeover of the Wakandan government is a criminal act. We offer you one chance to stand down and avoid bloodshed. One chance. Take our offer. Avoid the bloodshed, she says. But the leader of the Disturi refuses from his safety in the palace. But Shuri glares at him. You did not listen. We are not speaking to the people of Wakanda. We are speaking to the Disturi, she says. You are not Wakanda, T'Challa growls. And with a light and a bamf, Nightcrawler teleports the rulers into the Disturi throne room, where Shuri grabs the Disturi leader and snaps his neck. We are. T'Challa says as he stands over the body. Shuri has cut through the Disturi High Council in seconds, with a shocked Kurt watching on. This is war, she says to him. This is how you deal with traitors. T'Challa agrees, and the group splits up, with Shuri purging the palace while T'Challa heads to the Vibranium Vaults. He points to a map and looks to Kurt. The vault is here. Can you teleport me? He asks. Kurt nods and the two disappear. But suddenly they bounce back. What happened? Shuri asks as she helps him to their feet. I don't know. It was like hitting a brick wall that wasn't there, Kurt says. But T'Challa knows that Doom must have put a barrier in place to stop Kurt's powers. At the border, the army stands ready to fight against the mutants and the Dora Milaje, but they are still waiting for orders. Kurt returns and takes Wolverine and Colossus with him, but the army generals have finally gotten sick of waiting for orders. It is up to us to stop this rabble, he says, looking at the gathering Dora Milaje through his binoculars. Kill them all, he orders. In the palace, Wolverine, Colossus, and Shuri have begun fighting to take back control, moving through the halls and battling the army even though Shuri ordered them to stand down. Princess, some people just don't take go to hell for an answer. Sometimes you have to show them the way, Wolverine tells them as he pops his claws and starts cutting through the soldiers. In the vault, Doom stands before the final lock, and Aurora kneels on the floor, holding the Queen Mother to her. T'Challa is coming for us, Doom. He'll kill you for what you've done. She snaps. Doom turns to look at her. He'll try, but like everything else he's tried recently, he'll fail, he tells her. He claims that T'Challa is a defeated man already. And Doom reaches out his hand to the final lock, a strange portal. All that he's left me is a final challenge. Not a lock, but a puzzle. All that remains for me to do is to think as he thinks, as I have been doing ever since I lured him into a trap and nearly killed him. It is not who wins the battles, it is who wins the war, he says, almost to himself. At the border, the battle rages on, with the Dora Milaje and the mutants cutting through the Disturi army. The general is shocked to see his forces falling. In the palace, Shuri, Colossus, and Wolverine are still cutting through the soldiers, and seem to be winning, but they stop as another door opens, revealing even more troops. Doom looks at the strange portal. Speak to me he orders, and the portal swirls and words appear. Only through purity unencumbered by pretense may you pass, the words state. Doom crosses his arms and stares at them. Interesting, he whispers. Storm laughs, knowing that Doom could never defeat a lock based on purity, but Doom closes his eyes. As they continue to fight, Shuri has become enraged, cutting through the soldiers without remorse. These are your people, 
Kurt shouts to her in shock as she stabs through another soldier. The hell they are! They lost the right to mercy when they broke the ancient laws of our people, Shuri snaps. But Kurt continues to argue, questioning whether Shuri wants bloodshed to be the history of her reign. But Shuri shakes her head and removes her mask. You don't understand us, Kurt Wagner. I am not merely the princess regent of Wakanda. I am the claws of the panther god on Earth. Ask yourself, what would a panther do to protect its den? She says. The radio crackles, and T'Challa informs them that he has reached the vault. And Shuri asks him to wait, but he kicks in the door. There is no time, he tells her as he drops the radio. Inside, he finds Doom with his energy gauntlet to Storm's head. The errant knight storms the castle to rescue the beautiful princess and save the kingdom from the evil sorcerer. How prosaic, he says without humor. I'm giving you a choice. What is more important to you, your wife or the vibranium? Reveal to me the key to the last lock in five seconds, or I will kill the one you love most. Doom orders. He begins to count, finally reaching zero, and T'Challa hasn't spoken yet. Doom smiles and removes his hand. That was delicious. Seldom does one get to savor a victory like this, he says. T'Challa is confused as Doom tosses Storm to him and disappears into one of his portals. Farewell, T'Challa. This game has been most satisfying. With Storm safe, T'Challa rushes into the vault to find it empty, with checkmate burned into the wall. Shuri looks up at those she has come to meet, telling them the story of everything that has happened and led to this point. She pauses at the end as she waits for a response. He stole all of the vibranium? Reed Richards finally asks, his family gathered behind him. 10,000 tons of it, but how? T'Challa says with a nod, still not sure how Doom could get past his purity lock. Six hours earlier, Doom stands before the final lock to the vibranium vault. Reading the inscription, he pauses for a moment before stripping off his armor and stepping through the swirling black portal. Be judged, a voice bellows. The war for Wakanda continues in the present, with groups of the Disturi army continuing to fight. But the heroes are still worried about what Doom could do with his magically charged vibranium. Doom stands in the lair of the Broker, informing him that the ritual for the Vibranium will take some time. I leave it to you to buy me that time, Doom orders as he continues to set up his ritual. Buying time is expensive. Staff, equipment, raw materials, the Broker says with a smile. I don't care about the cost. You do your part and I'll do mine. Doom says as he pours a green liquid into his ceremonial bowl. In the vault, Namor, Sue, and Storm have gathered, with Namor still unable to figure out how Doom could have tricked his way past the panther spirit. In the past, Doom opens his eyes to see a strange landscape before him. What is this place? He questions. He is answered by the spirit of Bast, the panther god who informs him that she will look into his soul. If you lie to me, if your heart is impure, if your motivations are tainted by greed or hatred, I will know. Lie to me, Doom, and I will devour you. The vast panther growls as it paces forward, but Doom is unafraid, and he offers himself to Bast. I know who and what I am. Look into my soul, cat god. Look and see the truth that is doom. He says as the god lifts him up. Pain sears through his body as the god turns her gaze upon him. Back in the present, the Disturi are still fighting, 
Storm meets them with Sue at her side, but the invisible woman isn't needed. Storm lashes out with her powers and lightning blasts rip through the military forces in seconds. It's not nice to mess with mother nature, Sue says with a smile. In the past, Doom falls to the ground as Bass chastises him. She has seen the countless deaths he has caused. You are a monster, Doom. And yet, knowing all your crimes would be laid before me, you entered the Arch of Purity, the cat purrs, intrigued. But Doom knows who he is, knows what he has done in the past. But he believes that the god has not looked deep enough. You've looked deep, cat god, but not deep enough. Look into my soul, he orders. In the present, T'Challa and Reed have figured out a formula to track the vibranium signatures from Wakanda. But Reed reminds T'Challa that finding the metal is only half the problem since Doom will not give it up without a fight and wouldn't have taken it to Latveria so that he wouldn't face the world's governments. I agree. It's up to us to hunt him down, T'Challa says. In the past, Bast looks into Doom's soul, seeing all of the various futures that Doom has seen using his technology and magic. But Bast sees that everything that Doom has done is moving towards one goal. That the only future that he had seen where the world didn't tear itself apart was one under his rule. One where he sat on the throne and ruled the planet with an iron fist. Doom world, Doom tells the god. The present. T'Challa's forces have tracked the first cache of vibranium and are launching their assault. The broker watches from his command center, impressed that the heroes have arrived three minutes earlier than Doom predicted. And he taps a button, releasing the Doom hounds that are on standby. The airborne robots launch at the heroes' Quinjets, forcing Johnny Storm to leap out into the sky and attack them alongside Shuri. In the past, Bast has no choice but to turn away from Doom. Though she doesn't agree with his methods, she understands that his actions are pure and his desire for a peaceful world under his control. Though your methods are abhorrent and vile, your intent is pure. You have passed the test. The vibranium is yours to take. Do with it what you will, she says as she stalks away into the darkness. Meanwhile, in his base, Doom has finished his spell, standing with his new army. Johnny hits the Doom Hounds with his fire, but they seem to have no effect. Damn, these things are shrugging off near Nova Blasts. This isn't the way Vibranium is supposed to react. What has he done to this stuff? He shouts. The creature reaches out to bite his head, but a lightning blast hits it and knocks it away. On the ground, Sue is working alongside Shuri and the Dora Milaje to fight off the other Doombots with the strength of the Hulk. Sue tries to block their assault while Shuri leaps at them, but the Doom Hulks knock her away. I gotcha, Ben Grimm says as he catches her. He puts her down and rushes forward, slamming into the Doom Hulks. Inside their compound, the Broker and Doom watch the data as the new bots continue to fight. Doom doesn't care if they are all destroyed or not. He just wants the data for the next series. This is a big picture. T'Challa and Richards are trying to win a battle. I'm waging a war, Doom says. On the battlefield, Shuri isn't out of the fight. She pushes back to the crashed Quinjet and quickly changes into her high-tech panther armor. Outside, Sue is trying to hold back the Doom Hounds with her powers. What does it take to stop these things? She gasps. But the Doom Hound suddenly explodes as Shuri and the Dora Milaje reappear. Maximum power! Time to fight fire with fire! She shouts, informing Sue that they are now using vibranium-based firepower on the Doom Bots. 
Ben picks up some discarded vibranium scrap from the destroyed Doombots and wraps it around his fists. Works for me, he shouts as he punches the nearest Doom Hulk. After the battle, the heroes return to the Cave of Bost, where they have set up their command center. Reed has tracked the vibranium signatures to other factories around the world, and Shuri wants to hit them hard before Doom can adjust his strategy knowing about their new vibranium power armor. A dozen teams, full armor and weapons, she says as she looks at their battle board. We're done with sitting back and planning, T'Challa. We need to track Doom down and scorch any piece of earth on which he's walked. And we need to do it now, she says. At their lair, the broker informs Doom that 16 different teams have been dispatched from Wakanda. This is ahead of schedule, the broker says. Doom nods as he turns away from his spellbook. This isn't T'Challa. This move is rash and aggressive. This is Shuri flexing her claws. T'Challa may be the king in our little chess game, but Shuri is still the ruler of Wakanda, Doom says. But Doom is not worried as the assaults begin. He knows that the heroes will merely find his legions waiting for them, and that they will merely begin to lose their own forces even as they win each battle. Until they realize their mistakes, and it is too late, they will only discover their doom, he says. Meanwhile, another battle has begun as Shuri leads their forces. The Dora Milaje jumped forward, using vibranium-powered rockets to destroy the Doombots as Sue protects them with her shields. Afterwards, Shuri calls in to her brother and Reed. We lost 11 T'Challa. It's a small price to pay for taking out the entire factory, she says, telling him that they are already regrouping to join Grimm's team in taking out the next factory. T'Challa turns to his sister's image. Shuri, this isn't the way. You're throwing your fighters away like pawns on a chessboard. He snaps at her. But Shuri disagrees, believing that Doom has beaten them because he is in T'Challa's and Reed's heads. He knows what they are going to do. How many times does Doom have to defeat you before you realize that you're doing exactly what he expects? She snaps back before signing off. Reed tries to talk to T'Challa, but the former ruler knows that Shuri is right. If we can't win this game, then we have to change the very nature of the game, he says as he turns back to the computer. Reed looks at the images that begin to appear, recognizing them as shadow physics, something he isn't comfortable with. If I can't defeat Doom in this universe, then I need to open a door to another one, T'Challa tells him. But Reed believes this way of thinking is madness. Exactly. Doom knows how logical and orderly we both are. In essence, we've both trained him to outthink us. I think now is the time for us all to go a little crazy, T'Challa tells him. The heroes in the Dora Milaje continue to fight Doom across the world, losing their soldiers but defeating the factories at the same time. And the broker watches this unfold, pointing out to Doom that if this continues, his supply chains will be crippled. And while it's burning, you're doing what? The broker asks as he turns back to Doom, who is putting on his new armor. What am I doing? I'm winning, Doom says. The battles shift across the world and the heroes begin to lose, beaten back by Doom's forces. And Shuri falls in battle, blood pooling around her as the Dora Milaje move to protect the princess. T'Challa and Reed watch this all unfold. This is why we need to change the game, Reed. This is why a straight fight isn't going to work with Doom. Not anymore, he says. Reed looks at his friend, demanding to know what he has done. Meanwhile, at the Latvarian border, soldiers stop an approaching gypsy, a man who has doubled over from age, carrying a large bag. As one begins to search him, the other looks into the bag and is shocked to find weapons and explosives. The guard turns to see his friend already dead and a blade pierces his skull. 
short time later, Doom's castle is bathed in fiery explosions, his soldiers murdered inside. The door to his throne room cracks as an axe slams through it. The axe is pulled away, and Deadpool pushes his head through the opening that he's made. Doomy, I'm home! The merc with a mouth calls cheerfully. On the battlefield, Shuri is back on her feet. She calls back to T'Challa and Reed. Teams reporting in. Each of the bases have been taken or destroyed, but at an escalating cost. I don't know if we can call this a victory or merely a delay in inevitable defeat, she tells them. Also informing them that they've only recovered 8% of the vibranium. She tells them that they need to change their tactics, that they need to hit Doom directly. We need to find him first, and it seems that he's planned for that too. Even the Vibranium Tracker can't get a precise lock onto his location, Reed says as he turns to their battle map. But T'Challa knows that there is a way to find him. That way is impossibly dangerous, Reed reminds T'Challa. Later, Deadpool returns to T'Challa's base, dropping a net full of Doombot heads. So, a uh, funny story. I got a nice big retainer to introduce Victor Von Cranky Pants to his ancestors. And it turns out he hasn't been in lot wherever in weeks, he says. I have no idea why, but I was hired to take out Doc Doom, so point me at him. T'Challa nods and leads Deadpool to the shadow physics portal that he has created. He explains to Deadpool that everything is connected on the quantum level. And if they combine this on with shadow physics, they should be able to connect Deadpool to Doom. T'Challa continues to explain, but Deadpool isn't listening and just starts to check his watch. He finally motions Wade to the Dora Milaje that will be joining him. Your backup, Mr. Wade, the Midnight Angels, T'Challa says. Deadpool's eyes widened. Um, uh, do you believe in love at first, second, third, and fourth sight? Deadpool asks the beautiful women. Meanwhile, Shuri's techs have discovered a way to hack into Doom's licenses at one of his factories. She smiles as they suggest cutting off all of his funding. Technology may be his muscle, but this is his lifeblood, the tech says, and Shuri smiles. Then let's bleed him to death she says quietly. At their base, Reed has reached out to War Machine, informing him that T'Challa has begun to take drastic measures to win their war, possibly even heading into open war with Latveria. We could be facing a global war. T'Challa needs to believe that we can beat Doom in the field. And right now, he knows that we can't, Reed says. Rhodey pauses for a moment. Okay, Reed. How can I help? He asks. The battles continue, but the Doombots have begun to adapt. They've adapted to our battle suits. Fall back! Shuri orders as a Doombot slams into her, its blades trying to cut through her. Blood of the Panther God! Get this thing off! She shouts, but an explosion rips through it, tossing it away. Shuri looks up as War Machine stands over her, offering a hand to help her up. Is this a private war or can anyone join? He asks. At their base, T'Challa has finished suiting Deadpool up so that he can go through the quantum portal. He looks at the Merc, reminding him that he needs to locate the Vibranium and stop Doom. Deadpool nods. Me? Bunch of very violent hot chicks? Gratuitous violence? Big paycheck? Am I dreaming? Wade asks crazily. Deadpool is moved into the portal and it is activated. His body is torn apart as he is spread through the quantum realm, seeing all of the various forms he could take in alternate realities. 20 minutes later, Deadpool appears through the portal door again. Well, that wasn't too bad, he says but his arms fall off and hits the floor. He picks it back up and allows it to heal back onto his arm. Honestly, I've had worse. Yes, I sent the signal. No, I think my intestines will grow back. So, where exactly am I? Deadpool asks, seemingly talking to himself. Above the earth, the Midnight Angels have gotten the signal 
and are preparing for their attack. But a shadow falls over Deadpool, and he looks up as Doom reaches down and grabs him by the throat, lifting him into the air. Guys, I think we may have a bit of a problem. The Merc gasps right before Doom snaps his neck. Now, Doom stands over a fallen T'Challa, magical energy crackling around his armor as the other heroes stand in the background. Twelve hours ago, T'Challa calls into Shuri, telling her that Deadpool has located Doom. I can't believe you use that moron for something this important, Rhodey jokes. Shuri isn't sure this is a good idea, pointing out that a direct assault on Doom could be seen as an act of war by the world. I've taken care of that. The Midnight Angels are inbound. No IDs. No way to tie them back to Wakanda, T'Challa tells her. But Shuri is angry since she didn't authorize this attack. I know. I knew you'd never agree to an invasion. So I did what had to be done to protect our people and our world, he tells her. At his base, Deadpool is on the ground, and Doom is still preparing, informing the broker that one last thing needs to be done. Are you getting this? Deadpool whispers from a pool of his own blood as he watches Doom begin to charge his new armor. At their base, the heroes are watching Doom work through Deadpool's camera. He is way ahead of our worst case scenario timetable, T'Challa says, and Shuri nods, telling them it's time to act and calling in all of their teams from assaulting the factories. Head to Latveria, but don't enter their airspace. We can't risk open war. But I have a plan. I think we can make Doom come to us, Shuri tells everyone. In his base, Doom is fully powered. The vibranium. I can feel it. Every atom of it. Everywhere. Each fragment. Like a cell in my own body. He says in wonder as he looks at his hands. He can reach out and control it around the world, with his Doombots beginning to attack. This world is mine. Doom bellows in triumph. The other heroes of the world have reached out to T'Challa, informing him that the vibranium around the world seems to have come to life. Because this is only Wakandan vibranium, all fingers are pointing to you. Hank McCoy tells him. That's insane! We've never initiated a war before, T'Challa tells him. But Tony looks at him, explaining that the heroes of the world will fight off the Vibranium. You have to stop Doom no matter what it takes, no matter what the costs, Tony tells him. Deadpool has gotten to his feet, stalking behind Doom with his sword. But Doom whirls and punches him in the face and the ceiling above them explodes inwards as the Midnight Angels finally arrive. Kill Doom! They shout, and Deadpool leaps back to his feet. Hot boss chick says destroy. Who am I to argue? Sorry, Vic, Wade says with a shrug as he readies his weapon. But Doom lashes out and grabs Deadpool by the throat. Call for you on line one, Wade gasps as he holds up a communicator. Doom tosses him aside and picks up the radio. T'Challa, I expected some kind of grandiose challenge long before this, Doom says. Sorry to disappoint you, Doom, but this is not T'Challa. This is Shuri, Princess Regent of Wakanda and rightful heir to the mantle of the Black Panther. I challenge you, ruler to ruler, come out and fight. Shuri demands. Energy crackles from Doom as he contemplates the challenge. I'm weary of games. It is time to clear the board, he says finally. Doom's army gathers at the border and he finally joins them. T'Challa steps forward. You've attacked my people. You murdered my uncle and my friends. I have every reason to want to see you dead. But I ask you, in the name of peace and sanity, to stand down, T'Challa says to him. T'Challa tells Doom that the Panther God has come to him, explaining to the king of Doom's visions of the future, of the peaceful world that he strives towards. But I reject it, 
The future is not immutable. We will find another future, and we will start that search here now, T'Challa says, and Doom nods as energy crackles around him. So be it. Let's end this. Kill them all. He orders his forces as he opens fire. The heroes launch into a fight with the Doombots, but T'Challa leaps forward to fight Victor, hitting him again and again. You're stronger than you were, T'Challa, but you do not learn. I have won this war. I have earned the right to the Vibranium just as you have lost it, Doom says as he easily knocks T'Challa aside. Doom stalks forward and grabs T'Challa, lifting him into the air as he explains that Wakanda has squandered the precious metal. You don't even know what you'd be without it, Doom says, and drops T'Challa to the ground. The Doombots are defeated, and Storm and Shuri help T'Challa to his feet. He thanks Victor for the lesson, and agrees that Wakanda has become corrupt. Honor does not come from a thing. I don't know what my future is or what will become of my country, but what I do know is that Wakanda will find its courage and it too will rise to stand tall and more powerful than ever. T'Challa says as he pulls a device out. Doom stares at it, unsure of what is happening. What is this? What are you talking about? Doom demands. T'Challa activates his device using the shadow physics to transform all of the processed vibranium into useless lumps of metal. Doom falls to the ground, his remaining Doombots defeated. You are insane! You just destroyed your people! Doom bellows in shock. No, he's saved them, Shuri says as she removes her helmet and steps forward. Storm calls upon the lightning, using it to destroy the inactive Doombots. Shuri steps forward and slams her spear into the ground, letting the Wakandan flag fly. Doom, I want to kill you more than I've wanted anything else in my life. But that is the act of a savage, and I am the ruler of a sovereign nation. This war ends here, Doom, but be warned. If you lift a hand against Wakanda again, I will hunt you to the end of the earth and kill you, she growls at him. And so, the process of rebuilding Wakanda began. And that brings us to the conclusion of this very long Black Panther story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading this, sharing this with you, so I really hoped you enjoyed the story as much as I did. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, obviously click that bell icon, you want to make sure you get those notifications, right? And be sure to leave a comment down below. Also, if you want to support us even more than your subscription here, you can also go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash comicstorian where you can support us a bit further. Thank you guys so much. I'm looking forward to reading another story for you again here soon. Catch you next time.